Well, welcome back. We have an absolutely unbelievably cool guest with us right now. We have director Rob Cohen, who has done some unbelievably famous films. He's done Fast and the Furious, Triple X, uh, with some new films coming up. But my personal favourite, Dragon Heart, was actually my favourite film you've yeah, ever yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dragon Heart. I, um, so yeah, we've got a couple of questions for you, if that's okay to ask. Fire away. Um, we are going to go start off with the retro look. Um, one of my fellow friends and sponsors for this stream, Rob uh, Sharky Banties, he was absolutely jealous that I got to interview you today, and he has many questions, but I've had to narrow them down. Come on, um, Sharky, lay it on me, man. <laughs> the first one was, was Dolph Lundgren really seriously considered as Captain Freeman, Freedom in The Running Man? Yes, he was. Really? Yes, he was. Oh. And, and we went a little round and around that one. And then I think, uh, I don't know, maybe it wasn't a big enough part. You know, Dolph is a great guy, but, you know, he's had, he has a an ego the size of him, if not <laughs> a little bigger. And uh, I don't think he thought it was enough of a role. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, well, we... We could have given him an early break in the, the movie business here. It could have been another one I could lay credit to. Yeah, so, that could have take, been your legacy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had enough of them in there, you know, between Arnold and, and Jesse Ventura. We had two future governors, and uh, the movie pretty much uh, basically predicted the Trump presidency. How you terrifying know. is that? You're uh, psychic. It's, <laughs> it's scary as all hell. I'd rather have Richard Dawson than Donald Trump. <laughs> but, but, you know, you think of a, a kind of talk show, reality game show host becoming president of the United States, and you go, that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it would have been absurd what one person would have thought at one time. Um, yeah. Yeah. No more. Thank, well, there you go, Sharky. You, know, you don't have to look elsewhere now. You know, for, you know, for fact, that was true. Um, but you've also directed some massive films as well, like Fast and the Furious. Did you ever think when you did the first film it would be as big a franchise as it is now? No. Any, anybody who said they thought that is either lying or psychotic. <laughs> no, you know, I'm... I, I was making a movie for a spring, a spring break slot at Universal. Nobody cared about it. The studio didn't give a damn about it. The producer didn't care about it. I just had this idea, and nobody really understood what I was doing with these colorful cars and these non-star actors, actors nobody really heard of. Uh, but I knew what I was doing, and... You know, when I was just hoping it would be a big enough hit to make a second one. And everybody kept saying, oh, come on. You're never, you, you, you know, you're lucky if this first one gets out there. And that year, Jerry Bruckheimer, a friend of mine, was making Gone in 60 Seconds. And Sylvester Sly was making Driven, also a friend of mine. And every time people would say to me, what are you working on? I said, well, I'm doing this movie about this uh, street racing car world, and they'd look at me with complete pity and go, you do know Jerry Bruckheimer is making Gone in 60 Seconds and Stallone is making Driven, don't you? <laughs> I, like, I'm, I'm dead on arrival, right? Like, yeah, but I'm making something different, and I think you might be surprised who shows up for this one. And everybody thought I was deluded. And then... You know, the day came when it opened and there were lines around the blocks everywhere in America and uh, Gone in 60 Seconds flopped and Driven flopped. So I had the last laugh. And now there's a new one going to be in the cinema any day now. It's incredible. Yeah, a couple of weeks, I guess. You know. um, I have a personal question that I've always wanted to know. Is Vin Diesel as geeky as everyone says he is? Working in a game and comic shop, we hear rumors that he is a massive geek. He is a massive geek. First of all, he's massive. And <laughs> second of all, he's a geek. 
Um, yeah, he loves video games. He really does love video games. And we tried to bring some of that into Triple X. And, you know, I even wrote a scene where he has that, a talk with this kid on an airplane. And they get into, he starts to think about the rest of the, what's going to happen the rest of the movie is a video game. And that's when that kid says, yeah, what, what do you get if you win? And he goes, I get to be the, the hero. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it is a big uh, thing of him. He, he's bought the movie rights to several video games. I don't know what's ever happened to them, but I know he's once in a while involved in that. But yeah, he definitely is. That's the real deal. Well, that, that's also awesome to know. If you still talk to him, let him know about my shop if he's ever in Liverpool. <laughs> um, moving on to, from retro to the more current time, one of the, uh, the questions Sharky had was that he and myself are massive fans of director's commentary. He even has VHSs of The Running Man where it had director's commentary on VHS. I don't even know how that would have worked, yeah. but he has it. And he was wondering. Me neither. <laughs> he was wondering if streaming. Do you think streaming devices like Netflix and Amazon are going to be the end of the an end of the era of director's commentary, deleted scenes, and stuff like that? Or do you think it will just create more of a high demand, but it'll be through a different medium? Well, I think I think that. Uh they are slow in realizing that fans want the extras. You know, if you see a movie on Netflix, you should also be doing the featurettes, the documentary makings of, and you should also do the director commentary th that you could either punch up in, in as you're running the movie concurrently or have it be able to be dialed up on a second viewing without charging for the viewing of the film, but maybe just to listen to the, to the, the commentary. And I think m m people need to write to Netflix. They're very sensitive to their subscribers. So people should write to them and go, we love you, but you, we used to love director, uh, voiceovers or you know co running commentary and uh, uh, we we want that back how do you how can you include that as part of what how you present a, a new film and I, I think they'd be responsive I would personally love to have that back have I that remember back. watching aliens and watching it on directors com com commentary and just being blown away by all these special things you would never know about, which makes you appreciate the movie so much more than you ever could just by watching it. So, yeah, I'd love for that to happen. So maybe that's what we yeah. should all do. Anyone watching this, just start writing to Netflix and say that's what we want. Yeah, we want that director's commentary. Definitely. And, you know, one thing, I do all my commentaries in one take. Really? So, yeah, so if you're listening to any of mine, I literally start at the beginning, run the film, and just talk for the length of the film and uh you know don't edit it i don't try to spruce up stupid things i said or you know whatever that's on, that's actually an awesome piece of trivia do you it's enjoy trivia. doing director's commentary i love it because i feel like i'm really speaking to my audience i don't know if they're mine but you know to the people who want to know about a film of mine I feel like I'm creating a direct dialogue. And that really is heartwarming because, you know, you know, you read crap from movie critics and, you know, they don't have a clue what's going on and they attack you or misinterpret things and you just go, did he see the same movie? <laughs> you know, this people? But when you're doing your commentary, you really feel like the only people who would seek out that commentary are the people that like the film and want to know more. So now I'm having a conversation with them. And that is very rewarding. That's wonderful. So, yeah, we definitely can't let this die. We can't let this 
alternative medium dye. Um, but you're still directing films. You, you haven't stopped. You've got a new yeah. film coming out, Category 5. Yes. Um, tell us a bit about it. It sounds incredible. It sounds very much your type of film that you would direct. Yeah, it's pretty high octane. It's, uh, you know, it's all of those nonstop thrill rides or whatever my films have been called. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a heist that's planned by some insiders to go down at a treasury facility off the Gulf coast of, of Alabama. And, uh, they're, you, they want to use the a hurricane as the cover for the heist that the town will be evacuated and they can just move into this treasury facility and steal six hundred million dollars and they they successfully take over the treasury facility but they didn't count on two things one the the treasury agent a woman played by maggie grace that has this honor thing about stopping them and a meteorologist who's in the town to measure some of the storm uh, 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 scientific data that gets caught up in it for another reason. And bet between the two of them, the, the tough treasury agent woman and the meteorologist the meteorologist knows how to use the storm to beat the bad guys, and the, the treasury agent is the one who's really good at the guns and fighting and all that. So I made the woman the action hero and the guy the intellectual hero, and they, they work very well together. That's, the guy's played by Toby Kebbell, a British actor. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like and, an all-star uh, cast, isn't and, it? Yeah, and it's got Ryan Quanton from... True Blood, and uh, the villain is Ralph Ineson, who is the star of The Witch, the movie The Witch, and uh, it's a very good cast and uh, very lovely actors to work with. And I made the hurricane in front of the camera. It's not a CGI hurricane. Really, and, uh, I'm a big uh, fan of that. I am massively appreciate that. And I talked to all the actors and I said um, I'd like you to all do your own stunts and I'll make them safe but I need you to nut up and do it and every one of them including Maggie who I guess overeat up <laughs> instead of nutting up um, and she stepped up and they all did their own stunts and some of those stunts are pretty hairy so we're watching real, real storms and real stunts with this amazing cast. I have notes down here of the actors that are in it, which are just incredible actors. And next to Ralph, I just have everything. He was just in everything. He's in from Harry Potter to Peaky Blinders. Yeah. And just, it, it's incredible. And um, I used to have a bit of a crush on Ryan when I used to watch True Blood. So. Well, <laughs> we can hook you up, I think. Oh. <laughs> You have to come down from Liverpudlian land. That is, that is the official term as well, Liverpudlian land. <laughs> well, we'll be here. And know. when's the film coming out then? Well, we're not exactly sure. We're making a distribution deal now. So it's going to be either the, the August or October. Well, I have an Odeon Limitless card, so I am in the cinema at least once a week. So you can guarantee the week it's out... I'll be watching it. All right. That we got like 12 pounds. Or <laughs> yeah, that's it. You don't have to do any more work. You got that 12 right. whole English pounds, which doesn't mean Only that much after Brexit, but there you go. <laughs> well, Brexit. Don't get <laughs> on Brexit. But uh, I don't know. We live in very, very, very strange times. When you got a guy with a comb over as president of the United States and a moron. And then you got Brexit. And I just hope Marie Le Pen doesn't win in France, or I think we, we all have to move to New Zealand and kiss all this shit goodbye. 
I have a lot of friends in France and I was actually up in France for about two months at the beginning of this year and uh, yeah it's quite it's quite scary at the moment it's just yeah this is why we need to do good things like this stream to help promote positivity yes. and good things for good people yeah we want to help that mother and her daughter for sure yeah so yeah. thank you so much for doing this oh no when Andy Ewington my my uh partner on Red Dog, our own comic. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hello. Sorry, don't know what happened there. <laughs> uh, you know, in the, in the tremendously inconsistent world of Skype, uh, actually, we got a 20-minute conversation in before it screwed up. <laughs> I know, which is yeah. the Skype record. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Ellington's amazing. I've reviewed so many of his comics. That's how I got to know him. He's just a lovely, very talented person. Yes, he is. And uh, when he told me about this, I definitely wanted to do it. Yeah, I, I asked him as a friend, and then he, as just a good person, just went off on his own and made this stream an even better one to help at such a good thing. So. Thank you, Andy, and thank you, Rob. <laughs> but the most important hey, question... But, yes. The most important question before we go, what's your favorite cheese, Rob? <laughs> My favorite cheese is scormoza. Really? The smoked mozzarella cheese, scormoza. You know, I have to admit, I'm, I, I'm really ashamed to admit this. I've never heard of that. But that sounds incredible. <laughs> you never heard of Skormoza? Not Skormoza, no. Well, you need to get down to a cheese shop that has Italian cheeses. I you really like it. Do. It's very nice. It's smooth, and it has a smoky, a smoky taste. And uh, it's a very nice cheese with just a glass of red wine. Oh. It goes perfectly. We all love red wine. And it can help you quit smoking. Yeah. It can, it can help you quit smoking because uh, you got that smoky taste, the red wine, you don't need a cigarette. There you go. I actually might try that because I am currently trying to quit smoking. <laughs> Please quit smoking. My, my soon-to-be ex-sister-in-law died yesterday, and it's from the smoking. She was 48 years old. It's no joke. All you people listening out there, either stop smoking or don't take it up. Yeah. Better that you don't yeah. take it up. It's, it's, but please, it's not a good game. Please, Lucy. You don't want to be Tor Athena. You, want, you don't want to be Tar Athena. No, don't want to be Tar Athena at all. You'll actually be proud of me because I actually have been like quitting for the past two months now. So I'm going good. All right. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Oh, well, I've taken Dra Dra Draco would be proud of you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> well, I've taken up so much of your time. I will leave you there. But thank you so much for helping us out with this stream and just talking to us and just having a great time. And I know Kaylee and her daughter will be so grateful. Well... Tell them I'm sending my love and my prayers up to Liverpool to help them. And uh, I, hope, I hope you have a great show here, and I'm sure you will. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.